Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Manatazak with GMS Ancient of Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the Spirit, I want to get into a lesson going into how a separation is being made. Okay, and that separation I'm talking about are those that uh, are aligned to the true purpose and will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and everyone else. Okay, because here in these last days, you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of people. Okay, of our nation, and when I say our nation, I'm speaking about you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans who have woken up to the fact that they are Hebrew Israelites. And as beautiful as that is to the Spirit in these last days, that is not enough to get you salvation. Okay, you have to remember, there, there, there's been a falling away. Okay, and when I say a falling away, a falling away of, 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 our, of our true nationality, our heritage, our culture, our language, our customs. Most importantly, a falling away of the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Only Begotten Son. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay? And as beautiful as it is to see our people waking up in these last days, that's not enough. Okay? If, if you don't trust and believe in Yahweh Shai of Mashiach, if you don't trust and believe in the Apostles' doctrine that has been sent from on high, okay, to be taught in these last days in truth and sincerity, then you're not going to make it. Because even when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, we knew we were Israelites, okay? But not everybody believed on the testimony of Yahweh Shai, okay? And we come back in our same lot. So here in these last days, you have all these prominent groups that are at the forefront that aren't speaking truth, that aren't teaching the correct doctrine, that aren't exalting the name. And the Lord is making a separation between those that are really His, okay, and those that have been predestined to destruction and you don't want to be caught in that lot because as the scriptures say there's way more of us that are going to be destroyed here in Babylon the Great than that are going to be delivered and you should move with a healthy fear for Yahweh Shema Shai, knowing that even us doing this work in truth and sincerity don't know if we're going to make it if we're going to last to the end okay that's why there's a delicate balance that comes with being a part of this truth but without further ado, I want to begin in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, beginning at verse 15. And these are this is red letter. Okay, and I'm going to read on down. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. So this is what he says concerning the matter. Okay? Matthew, chapter 7. The headline above verse 15 reads, Beware of false prophets. So even during the time of Yahweh Shai, it was prominent. Okay, that there were false prophets among them. And Yahweh Shai was the way, the truth, and the life. But not even all Israel believed on him. And he came down in the same sinful flesh, the only begotten son of the Most High. So how much more now will false prophets be on the rise? Okay, when Yahweh Shai is not physically on the scene. Okay? This is uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Red letter, it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving, uh, ravaging wolves. Okay? This is a warning. They may come to you as meek and humble, but inside they're ready to devour you. Okay? A lot of these prominent Israelite groups are 501c3 prophets. Okay? And I mean prophets as in making money, not prophets as in prophesying the word of Yahweh by Shiva and Oshai. A lot of these groups are just about getting numbers. And getting money and being tax exempt and teaching from a syllabus. You got to remember, a lot of these groups don't exalt the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Only Begotten Son. But they'll gather abroad any and every Israelite that wants to join without any vetting process. You know? I mean, look at all these groups. Okay? I mean, you can name off the top five individuals, okay, from each group. 
because they're the only ones that are doing lessons. They're the only ones on the forefront. Yet they have thousands and thousands of members. Where are your works? You think marching around the streets claiming you're the real Jews are showing up to camp, uh, 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 you know, with uh, with bulletproof vests and extended clips is going to get you the kingdom? You're, you're going to be sorely confounded in these last days. When you re you guys really don't know what this is about, man. And the Lord, there's examples all through the scripture that the Lord was never about large numbers to begin with. The elect is a small remnant. And for a lot of you guys that are a part of these big congregations, that should scare you, man. Especially when you consider that your leaders aren't even teaching the 100% truth. Alright? Verse 16, it says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So you shall know them by their fruits. Not by the thorns and the thistles. The fruits are those that, 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 that take this word and pay it forward. Okay? That, 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 that multiply and increase the talents that have been bestowed upon them. If Yahweh was on the scene and he asked you to prove your faith, most of you probably wouldn't even call him Yahweh You would call him Christ. And on top of that, you wouldn't even have the works to prove your faith if you believe. All right? Verse 17, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Okay, so if you've been predestined to be destroyed, that's what's gonna happen. If you've been predestined to make it, then that's what's gonna happen. Okay? The Lord and the angels know who's who. Our remembrance of who we are has been taken from us. But we are gonna come back in our same lots. So so the Lord is making that separation clear uh, each and every day through the example that are being set by the by the different groups that are out there okay the apostles and elders of great millstone specifically the testimony of their faith can be seen through the works that they're continuing to put forth they have never stopped teaching they've never taken a break videos from them all the way from the 90s can be still found on YouTube in sites like BitChute and Odyssey of them with afros and big beards, not a speck of gray, but still on the highways and hedges, teaching, which they have continued to do to this day, leading by example. Okay? Can the same be said of your leaders? Do they even go out on the streets anymore? Are they imploring you to do your videos, to teach the congregation and feed the sheep? These are questions that you need to ask yourself. While you yet have liberty, because the doors of mercy are still open. But there's going to come a time where these videos are not going to be found. Where we're not going to be on the streets. And you're going to be left with the faith that you build up to this point. Okay? Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth forth not or that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So those of you that are not doing the work of the Lord, you napkin niggas that are hiding your talent, knowing that the Lord is an austere man, when he comes back, and the scriptures say, when Yahushua comes back, he's, his reward is with him, is that reward going to be towards destruction or towards deliverance? Because Yahushua is telling you right now, okay, that every corrupt tree, okay, is uh, that, that doesn't bring forth good fruit, okay, is destined to be hewn down and put into the fire, destroyed. All right? Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Okay? Going on to verse 21. The headline reads, Be doers of the word. A lot of you like groups out there like to boast in the law, but you, but you don't even keep the law. Now, we know we can't keep it to the best of our ability in this sinful flesh, but at least we're putting on as the elect to the best of our ability. We're not hypocrites over here at Great Millstone. We'll be the first to tell you that we're not perfect. Okay? Nor do we pretend to be. But we are sincere. And that much can be said by the work that we're putting forth. 
individually, not just on Saturday, okay, or, or whatever day that you hold camp. This is Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 21. And this is still red letter. These are the words of Yahweh Shai, all right? <clears throat> and it reads, Not every one that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And this should be scary for a lot of you uh, uh, Israelites in these congregations. Yahweh Shai is telling you himself that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. But most of you aren't even calling upon the true names of the Lord. So on that day, you're going to remember the Paleo-Hebrew names. And you're going to call upon the Lord. And you're going to plead your cause. But he's going to say he's never, he never knew you. And that's just like Jake, to wait till the last minute to try to get right. The time is now to put off that old man and turn to the old paths. Okay? The names of the Heavenly Father and Only Begotten Son are here. And they're going to be exalted in this world and the next. So it's best to start now, especially if you're an Israelite and, and have been opened up to that opportunity to do so. All right. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name uh, done many wonderful works? OK, and here's the balance. Even those that do know the names and use them. That's not a guarantee that you're going to make it. That's part of the fear of the Lord. The scriptures say that he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. So we have to endure until the end. You may believe and trust in the name of the Yahweh Hashem all the way into a point of where you fall out. Because remember, we're still in a, shi a, a shifting process. It seems like every other day somebody is falling out the truth and, and coming to scoff against the, the, the men of the Lord, still doing the work. You know? It's a scary time through the Spirit. Because not only is prophecy being prominent and at the forefront, but a, a, a lot of men that you may have thought <laughs> were going to last until the end are showing their true colors through the Spirit and coming against the doctrine, coming against the true teachers of the Lord. Not being brotherly, not being charitable. Okay? And even still, there's still agents among us that have yet to be found out, that are going to be exposed in these last days. A clear separation is being made. The Lord and the angels are definitely at work. Verse 23 And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. So the Lord sees everything. You may be a brother at camp. You know, you may be charitable at camp. But how how is your conduct during the week? Are you still being a nigga? Are you still being a hypocrite? When you think eyes aren't seeing you? The angels see you. The Lord sees you. And he knows the intent of the heart. Okay? Continuing on, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Okay, and that rock is Yahweh Shai. Okay, the chief cornerstone. That stone that was cut, uh, cut without hands is going to come and smash the statue. Yahweh Shai. Okay, we are to be rooted and grounded in Yahweh Shai, and yes, he is to be worshipped. All right, Salakia. This is the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 5, beginning at the top. It says, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Okay, Jerusalem, Yasharalim, the city of peace. Who's that city of peace? It's the Israelites. Okay? And we are a people before we're a place. So when it says run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, this is a clear uh, uh, order to go specifically to the Israelites. Okay? It says, and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof 
if you can find a man, if there be any, that executes judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. So we're supposed to go through the midst of the city, of our people, to find those that, that are penitent, that want to repent. Those that are seeking the truth, seeking the Lord ten times more. That's, the, that's one of the main missions and primary objectives of the hopeful elect is when we hit these street corners to, 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 to beckon our people back into the marriage. But not just our people, the elect of those people, those that are sincerely seeking the Lord. Because the prophecy states that two-thirds of our people here in Babylon the Great are going to be destroyed. But that one-third, when they hear the message, they're going to come correct and get right. So we have to teach all of Israel, okay, in hopes that someone among them will come back to the truth. Not all nations, but the Israelites, okay? And the Lord says that he's going to pardon them, okay? Because in their mouth was found no guile. We have been predestined. And I say that humbly speaking. We have been predestined to make it unto salvation. When Yahushua went on that cross as that sacrificial lamb, he died, yes, for, for, for the, the nation of Israel, but beginning with the hopeful elect. Because through them, those that don't make it on this, this side are going to come forth in the kingdom. And that is a reward in of itself. Okay, that's why we're fighting to make it on this first go around to receive all the blessings that have been promised to us because we have been in this captivity. Okay, we have been at the bottom of these nations. We're ready to start living and start ruling. Okay, and we're, we're in the time frame now where that's going to be that's going to be a reality, whether you believe it or not. In this lifetime, we are going to see the return of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay, verse 2, okay, Jeremiah 5, verse 2, it says, And though they say, The Lord Yahweh Shemashai liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord Yahweh Shemashai, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Okay, and that's likened on to two-thirds of our people who sold out for the bag, okay, who bent over, okay, for, for these uh, executives on the casting couch, all right, who sold out for FRNs, who signed a 501c3 uh, contract, who looked to build here in a land that is destined to be destroyed, knowing that this is not our land. We were sent here to Babylon as a punishment. We have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. Okay? And that city to come is going to be a sovereign city. Ruled in righteousness. Under Yahweh Shai, King David, and the rest of the 144,000. Okay? That's what we're looking for. That's the city and that's the promise that we're seeking. There is nothing left for us here in Babylon the Great. We were sent here as a punishment. And that punishment is almost up. Okay. Verse 4. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. For they know not the way of Yahweh Shemashai, nor the judgment of their power. And this is what we're saying to you Israelites. Okay. That refuse to come back and turn to the true doctrine. Even those that know that you're Israel. But still have one foot in the world. You're still, you are counted as foolish. And you don't know the fear of the Lord. Okay, because your actions would say otherwise. Verse 5. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord Yahweh Shemashai and the judgment of their power. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Okay, so the Lord is going to go to, uh, is, is going to put that spirit on his true men to continue the mission. As the scriptures say, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. Okay, so we're all going to come back in our same lot. The true prophets and the false prophets alike. And to segue back to the spirit, to, to what, what I tentatively named this lesson, a separation is being made. 
okay? And you're going to know a prophet was among you when the Lord makes it clear and, 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 and um, uh, without fault, so to speak. Okay? Uh, continuing on, let's get, uh, let's get Matthew 24, beginning at verse 11. This is uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Beginning at verse 11, this is a red letter once again. It says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And remember, Matthew, the 24th chapter, is going to tell you how shy talking about the future. Okay? He's talking about the times now. Okay? Because this is our last captivity. So how much more should we take heed to these words that are being spoken? Because after this captivity, okay, is, is our kingdom. So this is the last chance we have to get it right. Okay, and the hopeful elect are going to get it right. Once again, Matthew chapter 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, so we have to endure until the end. All right? We don't know if we're going to make it <clears throat> until we're beamed up in those ships and changed. The righteous shall scarcely be saved. And even still, there's going to be martyrs among us. I say that once again, humbly speaking. The hopeful elect. Some of us are going to, have, are going to be beheaded. Some of us are going to have to give our lives for this truth. And Lord willing, the Lord keeps the spirit, spirit on us to endure that. Okay? So we're, we're entering into some very serious times. And, and, and a lot of you Jakes out there aren't ready for what we're about to experience, for what we're about to see. Okay? Uh, let's get Second Peter 3 and 3. I want to show you that all the prophets spoke the same thing. And we are here, and, and back in our same lots, warning you. It says, uh... I'll begin at verse 2. And when you read 2 Peter chapter 3, the headline reads, Be ready for Hamashiach's return. I'll just begin at the top. It says, <clears throat> The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Okay? By way of remembrance. The elect has always been in the elect. And we're coming back in our same lots to stir up your pure minds. Though you though you once knew this, it has always been within the elect. That's why it's not hard. For, that's why we don't fight against the, the the orders that come down from from the men set up before us. That's why we don't buck up against the the the, the precepts and the teachings that are written herein. We are not offended nor ashamed. Okay. It says that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Okay, and that's what a lot of you murmurers are saying within yourselves. That's why you're moving without fear faithless Israelites. Did you not call great millstone faith-based Israelites and that's, as if that's supposed to be an insult? Thank you for the compliment. Okay? All you're doing is telling us something that we already knew because your lack of faith doesn't dictate ours. Okay? We know who we believe in and we trust of the words written in the book. All right? And as, as Peter is saying, he's stirring up the remembrance of those that, that, were, that were chosen to get it. Okay, it doesn't matter about you Israelites that don't believe, that mock and that scoff. And that say, oh, you guys said Yahweh Shai was going to return in the year 2000. That was just a stumbling block for you non-believers. Other prophecies had to be fulfilled, including that one, which was, which was in Luke, about those that desire to see the coming of the Son of Man, but it is not yet. It is in this time now. And the apostles and elders of the great millstone have been that perfect example of continuing to teach, continuing to prophesy. 
And Lord willing, those men are among those that see the return of Yahweh Shai. Okay? Uh, let's get 2 Timothy 3 and 13. 2 Timothy 3 and 13. It reads, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay, and we're starting to see that now with some, some prominent Israelite figures who are going to remain nameless. Their doctrine is getting worse and worse and worse, and we're seeing it play out right before our very eyes. Okay? The thumbnail of this video should give you a, a clear indication of who I'm speaking about. Okay? And he has a track record of going off and being double-minded. Okay? And there's no dispute in that because the videos are out there. Brothers have receipts. All right? But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Okay? And the apostles and elders have been switched up. Okay, they're, 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 our doctrine has been tried and tested, and we're still here. You can tell by the fruit of these men. Great Millstone is global, worldwide, in almost every country around the globe, teaching and prophesying consistently. Okay? Uh, we'll end it in uh, Proverbs 24. So I didn't intend for this lesson to be this long but you know the spirit is what dictates we're gonna get our proverbs 24 beginning of verse 21 we'll close out with that this is the book of proverbs chapter 24 uh beginning of verse 21 it says my son fear thou the lord yahweh shemashai and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change okay for their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? Okay, and th th this is a this is great. Um, this is uh, some great advice about uh, not meddling with them that are given to change. Okay, because you you can you can see. Okay, the things that they were teaching beforehand, because the videos are out there, and the things that they're teaching now. Yet their congregation isn't asking questions of why and what changed and what happened. You got these Israelites that are in the forefront of these groups going on these major networks and podcasts and, and, and this and that. But none of them are exalting the names. Okay? These Israelites think that the fil filthy lucre of this world is, is, is going to compare to what Yahweh Shai has promised to us. Which we don't even know everything that's going to be readily available to those that believe. Because as the scriptures say, we've only seen a few of his works. But the things that, 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 that are written therein are enough to keep us going. And to keep our faith strong. And we continue to pray and ask the Lord to keep us in this thing. In truth and sincerity. Because at any time he can take the spirit from us. And we move cautiously knowing that. This thing is deadly serious. So Lord willing, when the Lord makes that proverbial line in the sand, we are found among those men that are in the good graces of Yahweh Hashem Hashai. Those that have been predestined to be joined unto his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Okay? So Lord willing, this lesson has been edifying to the hopeful elect. I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Rakakwadash, Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutation to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach the thing of ours in truth and sincerity. This has been your brother Manat Dezak. And until the next lesson, Shalom.